Welcome uh, to an extraordinary uh, discussion on cross-border talks uh, with my colleague Mamužata Kubačevska. Just one year ago, one of the first issues on cross-border talks was, uh, which we discussed was related to migration and Poland. And uh, at that moment, there was a migrant crisis related to Middle Eastern migrants coming to Poland from Belarus. And uh, over time, the war in Ukraine started. A lot of Ukrainian migrants came to Poland. And now we are here to make some kind of a review of the of one year of time and what did we learn about uh, migration and European and Polish policies towards migration. So Magujata, let us start with this. What happened one year ago? How did the migrant crisis start? Hello, thank you for recording this special episode with me. It is very painful for me to think back, to go back to August 2021, because that was the beginning of the crisis in which Europe and Poland showed a very ugly face. Basically, in the middle of August 2021, uh, a group of Afghan citizens was detected on polish belarusian border, not far from a village called Usnash Górny. These people were coming from Afghanistan at the time when everybody all, everybody in the world was watching Afghanistan and the evacuation of American forces. And these people wanted to apply for international protection here in Europe. They thought that European Union is serious about defending human rights and offering protection to those who may be in danger of losing their lives, their health, whatever they had. Unfortunately, here in Poland, they were pushed from Polish border to Belarusian forest. And when they were about to retreat to Belarus, the Belarusian border guards forced them to step back. So in the end, the group of about 30 people, including women and young girls, was forced to camp between two borders, between two states, waiting for somebody to have mercy on them, which ultimately never came. In the end, the group ended up in Belarus, pushed back by uh, Polish forces. They were not the last migrants coming to Poland. There were uh, this, the first group came from Afghanistan, but in the coming months we had migrants from Syria, Iraq, we had Kurds from both Syria, Iraq and Turkey. We had people from Leban Lebanon, we had people from Iran, we had even citizens of Cuba and a dozen of African states, the states in which life is more or less unbearable. Then we found out that they did not come to Poland just because they wanted to discover our country. They were, they were coming here because the Belarusian dictator, President Alexander Lukashenko, set the whole scheme allowing people from Iraq and other Middle Eastern states to get Belarusian visas and then to try to cross Polish-Belarusian border to get to European Union. These people were told by the Belarusian authorities that coming to Pol through Poland to Germany is very easy and that they need just a few steps uh, to end up in Berlin where they where many of them already had their relatives or they wanted to join uh, Muslim Middle Eastern communities of Germany. In the end, these people were chased in Polish fo in forests on the Polish side of the border that were pushed back to Belarus. And the Belarusian border guards were not helpful either. They pushed them again to Poland. Many people were pushed back and forth more than 10 times. There were people dying in the forest. Officially, the number of victims does not exceed a few dozens, but in fact, nobody knows how many people lost their lives in the forest. There were sick and elderly people being pushed back. There were children pushed back. And all of that was justified by a supposedly grave threat to Polish security. Polish government said that we could not afford admitting even a few hundred of refugees, even a few thousand of refugees, because at one moment there were 4,000 people on uh, trying to cross the border at one time. So they said that this group of a few thousand people is such a grave risk to Polish stability and security that we absolutely can't allow them even to apply for international protection. Uh, in, at first, Poland was condemned by international organization, 
by the human rights organizations. Then the situation got a little bit, got changed a little bit because the government of Angela Merkel, it was yet Angela Merkel at the head of German government at that time, uh, started to endorse Polish actions. Germ the Germans basically said that Polish government was right to qualify the whole situation as a hybrid operation that was orchestrated by Alexander Lukashenko. And because it was a hybrid aggression, as they said, Poland had to defend its border and at the same time the eastern border of European Union. However, the human rights defenders assessment was much different. They said that the people coming to Poland came in base in most of cases from really from countries that were really destroyed by wars, by natural disasters, by poverty and that they really wanted to apply for international protection for a justified reason. And we should at least have listened to them. However, in most of cases, they ended up in Belarusian forest with Polish state never caring what might happen next to them. What is the most, what is perhaps the saddest in all this story is that uh, the crisis that started in August, so one year ago, went on and on from in the ongoing months. It has not yet ended. Polish border guards are still searching for migrants in the forests on the border. Even though uh, Poland built a wall, a separation wall, a real separation wall between Belarus and Poland, people are still trying to get to Poland. People are still so desperate to try this way. And the Polish state's position never changed. We are opening our borders to Ukrainian refugees, but not to Syrians, Afghanis, Iraqis, African people. Okay, you mentioned that um, in the beginning of this year, Ukrainian refugees started coming to Poland, and they are in fact a very huge number. Um, what can we say about uh, this contradiction in, in attitude? It looks like there is one attitude for Ukrainian refugees and another for Afghan or uh, Middle Eastern refugees and migrants. Um, there, it, it was a difference which was noted by many people, including the Bulgarian prime minister at the moment made some kind of allegation that uh, Ukrainian refugees are good because they are educated and they have IT skills, while Middle Eastern, they are different from the Middle Eastern refugees who are maybe some kind of terrorists. So this... Uh, this idea uh, seemed to be prevailing, but um, isn't it also justified that Poland and Ukrainians, especially Ukrainians of the West, maybe Catholic, maybe speaking language close to Polish, they have some cultural proximity, whether while um, maybe other Middle Eastern refugees are different culturally from Polish people, and maybe that is how valid is that explanation for the different attitudes. Well, it is uh, for it is not controversial to say that indeed Poles and Ukrainians share a common history, while Poles and Afghans do not, or that it is also obvious that it is easy for a Ukrainian citizen to learn Polish if he or she starts living in Poland. It would be much easier than for an Arab-speaking person. But the problem is that we have international law. We so we. We as European Union member, we are supposed to protect human rights. We are supposed to keep certain standards. And uh, the standards, uh, those international rights on migration, do not say anything about cultural proximity or about uh, giving a priority to people who confess the same faith as we do. Uh, by the way, in history, Roman Catholicism and Eastern Orthodoxy did struggle very strongly and it was not obvious even before the Second World War for Polish Christians, Polish Catholics, that Eastern Orthodox people are of the same confession. So perhaps this cultural proximity is also not to be overlooked. Nevertheless, this is, this is not that important. Uh, we have the we have human rights declarations, we have international documents on migration, and they say that what we must take into account in the first place is the situation of the person that tries to come, to, that applies for asylum. And indeed, people coming from Syria, Afghanistan, or Congo, or, um, or Cote d'Ivoire, 
because all, all these nationalities appeared on Polish-Belarusian borders, they are indeed escaping a horrific situation in their homelands. Then uh, one, one more issue. Uh, it was when the Polish government sealed off the Belarusian border, they said uh, that even a, a few hundred people would this not only pro, uh, pose a threat to security, but also endanger a certain balance in Polish society. Basically, they said Poli that Polish state could not afford helping them. It was basically the same story that they said a couple of years earlier when there was the whole discussion about re refugee relocation in Europe. Then, in February 2022, we accepted Ukrainians in hundreds of thousands, not in thousands, but in hundreds of thousands. And it, was, it turned out that it is possible to set up reception centers, to organize help in cities, to organize volunteers, to uh, even to host Ukrainians in people's own houses. It is very tragic that before the Ukrainian refugees started to come, it was actually an insult, a pseudo argument in immigration discussions in Poland. I mean, when somebody said, I am for accepting refugees in Poland, the other side would say, then host them in your flat. And then when Ukrainians started coming, it turned out that actually hosting somebody in one's home is a wonderful solution that everybody endorses. This is ironic, this is tragic. and. It turns out that uh, now from this perspective of time, I am totally sure that we could have helped this couple of thousands of Kurds, Arabs, Afghanis, what, uh, whoever was on the Polish-Belarusian borders, just as we then mobilized to help Ukrainians. Especially that it is also a well-known fact that most of those people uh, did not aim to stay in Poland. They had families in Germany, in France, elsewhere. Or even if they did not, they wanted to go to the rich countries of the West and not necessarily to stay in Poland. And anyway, we, our government decided he needed to seal off the border and show a strong hand, which was inhuman. Um, there is another element of the story because we are in the European Union and European institutions or um, Western European states are somehow expected to be guardians of European law and uh, regulations. Um, so what was exactly the position of the European Commission or other European important European countries uh, during uh, both uh, stages when only Middle Eastern migrants were coming and when the Ukrainian refugees also started coming? How did they treat Poland? Uh, and what was the, rela the relation between the EU and Poland on the issue of migration? So, uh, as I said, Poland was condemned for the uh, for its action on Polish-Belarusian border by human rights defenders and by European Court of Human Rights that actually called Poland to, in, to accept these 33 migrants from Afghanistan, thing that never happened. However, the European Commission never condemned Poland, never expressed any particular discontent with Poland's action, the European Commissioner of Internal of um, of Interior was a fre frequent visitor in Poland in the first phase of the human of this humanitarian crisis. She spoke frequently to a representative of Polish government, and basically she always went. She always flew back to Brussels, saying that uh, she examined the situation and that Polish government was doing what it had to be doing. So, uh, in December 2021, the European Commission even started proceeding a document. I, I can't say exactly what type of document it was, but it was a kind of directive allowing Polish government, as well as the government of Lithuania and Latvia, to introduce exemptions in migration law that, for example, would free them from the obligation to accept uh, asylum applications. These applications were not accepted anyway, but had this uh, change, had this document proposed by the European Commission been accepted, it would be totally legal for Poland, Lithuania and Latvia to set up just a couple of reception points on the border and then legally push back the migrants under pretext that they came in a different point of the border where there was no reception point, etc. 
Uh, however, this uh, this document, as far as I know, was never put into practice, basically because of the war, because of the war in Ukraine started, and the issue of Ukrainian migration becoming uh, the key question that on the top of the whole migration debate. And as we know, when Ukrainians started crossing Polish Polish or Ukrainian Polish border, the approach of European Commission was totally different. It was said from the very beginning that Ukrainians can come that there will be some simplified uh, rules for them to legalize their stay. Also, Poland voted very quickly a special law on Ukrainian migration that enabled Ukrainian citizens coming after 24 February to stay legally in Poland for 18 months. And not only staying, but also working legally, which normally and normally receiving a work and stay permit is a lengthy procedure in Poland and in many other countries of Europe as well. So it turns out that the Europe, the European Union closed the doors for one type of migrants and opened it widely for another group. However, we also found out now when the war in Ukraine has also been raging for more than half of the year, that there is basically no consistent migration policy, neither in Poland nor in European Union. Because what we find out now is that certain regions of Germany are already saying we can't accept any more Ukrainians, there are no more places for them, no places to accommodate them. Uh, in other states, there are also problems with that. So it turns out that the Euro what everything that Europe can do, this is my conclusion after this double crisis, everything Europe can effectively do is to close the door or open the door. And then people have to deal with the situation themselves and find solutions themselves, which is really not fair.